What's going on, everybody? I just wanted to give you guys my review of uh, Duff McKagan's uh, documentary, It's So Easy and Other Lies. So it's now available on Netflix in North America. I did hear some people in Europe uh, did say that they couldn't find it on Netflix, so it looks like it's only available in Canada and the U.S. at least. Maybe it'll come over to Europe uh, later on. But, uh, yeah, I watched the documentary. It's about an hour and a half long. It's one of many Guns N' Roses documentaries, you know, that are out there. And this documentary is based off of Duff's book, It's So Easy and Other Lies. But, of course, they gloss over a lot of things that are written about in the book. And the way the story is told is actually quite interesting. So it's sort of told mostly through, like, a live reading that Duff does. But he's also got a full band supporting him. So they do, like, he'll be reading and then they'll have, like, the band in the background playing. And they'll be playing, like, instrumental covers of different Guns N' Roses songs. Maybe a Velvet Revolver song. Uh, and it's really nice some of the arrangements they do because you probably have never heard Night Train done this way before or Sweet Child of Mine or Paradise City. Now the story mostly or heavily focuses just solely on Duff. There are periods where he talks about Guns N' Roses but he doesn't really talk about it with the same depth he does in his book because he's only got an hour and a half. And that's, and that's where it may disappoint some fans. Like, he talks briefly about Guns N' Roses, like how they met, how they formed. He talked about the St. Louis riot, but he never at all talked about the difficulty in dealing with Axel, going on stage, you know, late, and dealing with contractual stuff with Axel. It's more about what his frame of mind was at that point in time and how he basically self-medicated himself. There's a very heavy emphasis here on his panic attacks and his his uh, alcohol abuse and his drug abuse. And then, you know, he also talks a lot about the bands he played in when he was much younger. He talks about his period after he left Guns N' Roses and during his time in Velvet Revolver. And it kind of ends, like, towards the breakup of Velvet Revolver, and that's basically it. I was a little disappointed with this documentary. It just felt like it didn't do the book justice. If you guys are watching this and thinking it's a good substitute for Duff, reading Duff's book, it's not do yourself a favor go get Duff's book it's one of the best books I've ever read I think if you're a Guns N' Roses fan and you have Netflix go check out this documentary we've been paying money for it I probably wouldn't recommend it if you pay for Netflix anyways it's probably worth just streaming it and watching it there are some cool photos I've never seen before and there's some interviews here with Matt Sorum and Slash as well there's some interesting stories about Velvet Revolver I never really heard much about especially when everybody in the band basically relapsed in 2005 but uh, that's my thoughts on it have you guys seen the documentary what's your thoughts on it comment down below and as always guys make sure you subscribe for all things related to Guns N' Roses. Take care.